Hey everyone, welcome back to Matchnik Garage. Today we're working on the 77 F-150 LS swapped. Uh, working on putting the uh, new front axle in. Got the new one right here. Previous videos we went uh, pulled it apart and got it all painted up and whatnot. Um, I just went ahead and put it all together. Um, people didn't really quite seem quite interested in that part so just went and did it off camera got the uh, track bar new tie rods there um, I had uh, mentioned before that uh, we were going to be changing the tie rod setup in the steering box and whatnot um, let me uh, show you over here exactly what I was talking about um, and why we're changing it so this one here, that is the one that was on the truck, uh, 1977 style. Uh, this is what they call a Y-Link, obvious reasons. Um, both tires are not connected with the solid bar. Um, that allows for a lot of towing in and out as the suspension travels. Um, that's not what we want. Um, so the other reason is this bar right here drag link, tie rod, whatever they want to call it. Um, I think it's bent for one, but two, it's not available. I wasn't able to find that one anywhere. Um, not that we wanted it, but it just wasn't available. This other one here, this is off of the axle that, uh, that I redid. Now, this is a 78 style. So it goes from one knuckle over to the other knuckle, solid bar, We've got adjustment there for toe in, toe out. And then a solid drag link straight up to the pitman arm and back. So this, as the suspension travels, the wheels will stay true with one another wherever we set it at. Um, and then ideally, this drag link will roughly match the same angle as our track bar um, to get rid of the bump steer and, and all of that. So. Just a little bit, a uh, little bit of an upgrade. Uh, it'll, I think it helps tire wear and all that. A um, little easier to set without taking it to an alignment shop. I hate paying anybody to do anything because they're either don't do what they say they're gonna do or it's only half done and the steering wheel's crooked and all that. So um, I just hate doing it. So what I'm gonna do is probably set you up on uh, time lapse while I pull this out. If you really want to see a little more detail of pulling it out, uh, I did pull the axle that I redid out of the donor truck um, in part one. Um, you can go back, check that out, but I'll just set this up. We'll get it out quick. And then uh, there's a couple other things that I want to do to the frame uh, before we put the new axle in. Um, the other thing I would like to do before we put the new axle in, uh, there's a crack in the oil pan on this engine. Um, it's how I got it. It always leaked oil. I never looked for it. And then as soon as I got this truck started, as the oil got hot, it started to leak more. So I did find a crack. Previous owner, they must have set it down hard or whatever, it cracked the oil pan. So I do have a new oil pan. Uh, without the axle in the way, I'd like to be able to just get under there, pop the oil pan on, and got a new filter and oil and all that. So uh, just e ease of, um, things in the way easy to get to so we'll just do it then so we'll get this axle out and then uh, pick you back up
All right, so I got the axle out. That wasn't too bad. Uh, it came out pretty easy. I didn't have a drive shaft hooked up or anything like that. So, so much room for activities under here now. But, open that, see this hole here? So I've got a new uh, spring tower for that. Got it all painted up. Um, the only part that uh, really isn't great for changing that is these two bolts here go through the motor mount these two bolts are a real pain to get to and then this axle bump stop bolts up through the bottom sandwiching the, the spring tower in the frame that is a real mother to get to so i'll get that stuff swapped out uh, it's also a good idea that uh, I ordered, I decided to order springs. And I don't even know if I can get this part off here. Alright, so well, that's the bottom, bottom of the driver's side spring. So it is already broke. So I ordered springs, they haven't come in yet. But then these here, I guess that one's not too bad. That spring retainer is kind of thin. Um, this spring bucket's not too bad. So we'll probably leave that one on. I've got another one if it ever becomes an issue. So the other thing I need to get off, this power steering box uh, leaks around the bottom seal. I'm sure you can get a seal and whatnot, but there's plenty of play in it anyway. I don't really see it worth putting any money into. And then this is the 77 style pitman arm, which is a serviceable part if you can find it because it's got the ball joint in it. Um, the one that's on the other box is just straight and it has the hole for the ball joint to be on the drag link. So I'll work on getting that off as well. But now we've got all that room to get at the oil pan. The, uh, the crack we can't see it but it's right on this bottom corner it's just a constant leak um, i mean the whole engine's pretty greasy anyway but it's going to work for what i want it to do so work on getting that stuff off and then in uh i believe it was part one of this axle swap i had mentioned that the uh, studs on the trailing arms start to really rot away inside the trailing arm bushings. And let me show you what I'm talking about. These ones here, I don't know if you can see that. That's not supposed to be tapered in this area. Um, that's supposed to be straight down with the threads. Those ones are pretty far gone. These ones, they've got a little bit of rust here, but there is a lot more material on the two that were on the parts truck. So I cleaned those up, those are painted up. So I'll work on getting uh, this spring tower off, the rusted out one. Um, work on getting the power steering box off. Once I got those off, I'll pick you back up and we'll see what the frame looks like underneath. A lot of times there's so much rust jack in between uh, the layers of steel there that it'll just eat holes in the frame. On a two-wheel drive uh, 70s Ford, I have fixed the frame before where the spring bucket actually broke off the frame. And once I took that off, then it was just rust jack so much underneath, there was holes in the frame, had to patch that all back in. So I'm really hoping that this one's not that way or else this became a much larger, larger project than I anticipated. But you probably noticed that I've got the truck up on the trailer no other reason than the trailer needed to be inside to where I store it, but it gets it up off the ground a little bit. So I don't have to be down on the creeper or, you know, it's just, it's much easier to work on this way. So I just thought that was a good idea to do. So I'm going to work on getting those couple of parts off and then I'll pick you up and we'll see what the frame looks like. All right. It's a new day. Uh, I ended up having to go out on a service call after, uh, I got some of the brackets off yesterday. Um, so 
I uh, finished getting the brackets off and let's take a look at um, all the frame and how all that's doing. This is that uh, spring bucket that uh, has the hole in it obviously. So that's, that's no good anymore. Probably to be fixed, but I'm not going to. Frame looks pretty good. I mean, there's still some factory paint under there. So we're getting pretty lucky for, you know, how rusty some of this, some parts on this truck are. Um, I decided to just take shock mounts off and everything. And then we'll get the frame wire wheeled and put some paint on there. So at least there's some paint behind the, the uh, shock mount and the spring bucket. So it doesn't start to rust behind there. But of course, with anything else I've done on this truck, um, there's always some new issues that come up, and I'm sure most projects are like this. Um, for example, I uh, took the steering shaft off, and it looks like somebody did some customization of the rag joint. Check this out. So, it's pretty cracked up, but you'd think that was just a normal rag joint. I'm pretty sure a normal rag joint has a hole in the middle here. Um, I think this is either a chunk of mud flap or like a sidewall of a tire. Um, whatever it is, it's not for steering components. So that's got to get changed. Uh, over here, I can reach it. This U joint on the uh, steering column side. Pretty stiff going that way, um, pretty loose going that way, but it's got some play in it. So I'll have to decide whether I put a rag joint in it just for now, um, and then when the time is, comes, I'll just order a shaft for it. Probably get an updated one with U-joints instead of the rag joint. Um, but I don't know if I want to leave the truck sitting here without steering for however long it takes me to get steering shaft. But I decided to pull a spring bucket off this side too. Um, this is the driver's side. Again, there's some factory paint on there, which is nice to see. I uh, got the steering box off and took the shock, shock mount off as well. Well, the track bar mount. So I figured I'd just clean it all off and wire wheel it, paint it. And then uh, I am probably gonna put the uh, spring bucket from the other truck onto this one. Um, let's see. grab it here. You know, this is what it's supposed to look like on top, no holes. But uh, you know, there's there's some good pitting in there, so this is definitely thinner around the top. So I'll just put the other one on and uh, go from there. Probably gonna work on getting. You know, this is the track bar bracket. I'll work on getting that wire wheeled, throw some paint on that. You know, I'm not trying to make it a show truck or anything by doing this. Just trying to slow down some of the rust. Um, you know, I'm not going to drive it probably in the snow and the salt or anything like that. But you never know. Maybe once if I have to. So, well, uh, I'll get the wire wheel out and start cleaning up the frame here. And then uh, once I've got that cleaned up, I'll probably switch to doing the oil pan. You know, with all the room under here, I'll just get to it, do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have everything I need to do that. Um, but I've only got so much time today. Uh, so I'll get that done and then hopefully paint frame last and then it can dry overnight and uh, maybe get back out here tomorrow and uh, keep going. You know, naturally this is gonna take four times as long as I thought it would. So um, we'll just keep plugging away and little by little it'll get done. So I'll get the frame wire wheeled here and then I'll show you what it's, what it's like.
All right, that's not so bad. There's uh, there's some pitting, but uh, everything is still there. All the threaded inserts for the steering box and whatnot are all seem to be in decent shape. Can't really get to the top, so I'm not really going to worry about that right now. But you know, and then this front, we'll worry about that another day. There's some other issues up there to address at a later time. But this other side, let's see here. You know, there was a spot on there that was starting to scare me that it was going to go too deep, but there's nothing to worry about there. So I think what I might do is, uh, I know I said I was going to do the oil pan next. I think I might throw, you know, degrease these a little bit because I'm sure I was slinging power steering fluid on the other side but uh, I think I'm just gonna go right to painting those and then because uh, uh, I'm sure they're gonna need two coats so I'll get the first coat on I'll start doing the oil pan and then we'll get the second coat on before I gotta leave so I'll just keep getting at it well it's another day got the frame painted uh, two days ago now I'm back uh, we'll check this out looks pretty good that's just that semi gloss so we just gotta get the frame brackets uh, the spring bucket and the shock tower back on this side and then uh, we'll go back over the other side I did throw the spring bucket and shock tower all on this side steering box um, I had another steering shaft with uh, a proper rag joint. Granted, it's old, but it's better. So I put that on there for now so I can at least move it around. But this side's ready to go. Got it all tightened up. So I will uh, get the other pieces on the other side here, and then we'll get the axle lifted up here, and uh, we'll go from there. Started working on the oil pan, just getting ready to turn the camera on. Just pulled the drain plug, drain what was left of the oil. And, you know, go figure, this is teaching me a lesson. Always have the camera running. I, uh, I just turn around, drop my ratchet right in the uh, used oil. You know, that probably, you know, would have at least gotten a good laugh. I wasn't laughing. So, got the oil drained. Uh, got there's two bell housing bolts that go into the bottom of the oil pan on these uh, LS engines so I've got one and a half out now that my uh, ratchets thoroughly lubed up so I'm gonna get that the rest of the way out um, and then start pulling all the 10 millimeter bolts out I don't know about you guys but I don't care much for doing oil pans there's almost no way to not get completely full of oil. You know, and had I known it was cracked before I put it in here, probably wouldn't be so bad. Should be up. Oh, well, definitely all of them. Oil come out of there. You try not to wear all of it. Oh, 
does that look crusty? It's not what I was hoping to see. You can definitely tell they change their oil every 3,000 miles. Or maybe nine. That's probably cooked. take this tray off of here but I'd really like to see inside there well, I can see up to the cam at least barely that looks fine I guess you know, looks like this engine's got probably got around 250, 300,000 miles. That's for sure. It's not. It's not what I was hoping to see. We'll just say that. I'm just trying to get a look at this one of the cylinders. That one down. I just can't get. No. Another time, I guess. Looks like somebody's put a front cover gasket on here. Or I've had the oil pan off before. But why don't I just grab you and show you what I'm looking at here? It's just cooked on. So I'm pretty sure this tray is supposed to be a little more silver than black there you can kind of see it but look at the sludge just caked onto there thick just yeah well it'll be what it'll be let's see if we can See up to the timing chain. I'm sure the timing chain's probably stretched. I don't know if they really had the same issues on the LS engines like they did on the Ecotex and the 3.5 in later years. But I'm gonna get this gasket surface cleaned up and then uh, and we'll put this new pan on. Probably should have just left the old one on and put some putty on it. All right, that turned out to be uh, quite a bit of bigger mess than I was hoping for. Uh, there was quite a bit of, you know, gasket residue and whatnot on the uh, block surface. So I got all that cleaned out. Then I was just way too oily and greasy to be touching the camera. So apologize about that. But let me show you where we're at. I've got the pan on there. new pan. Um, I got a plug in where that, uh, you probably can't see it with the glare, but right here there was some factory sensor, so I put a blank plug in there and then got everything tightened up so that's all set. Actually, you see I missed one bolt there. We'll get that in later. 
But I've got the new axle up here now. Just put it right on the wheel dolly so I can just slide it under. And then uh, we'll start getting after this. I don't have shocks yet, so I'm not going to put the old shocks back on. That just seems silly. So I'm going to get uh, new control or new radius arms under there, all new bushings, you know, all that. So we'll, uh, we'll set you up here and you can kind of see how that goes. All right. Well, now we've got the uh, new C bushings put there um, for both sides, obviously. Trailing arm bushings, new washers and all that. And I got new track bar bushings as well. Now I decided to go with uh, rubber bushings. Um, you know, just like the factory, they worked for so many years. Didn't really see a point to go with polyurethane. You know, and it seemed like kind of the polyurethane as they start to dry out, they just start to fall apart really easily. So I didn't really want to deal with that. And these were cheap, and so that's what I went with. So I'm just going to get uh, these kind of slid up into their mounts and just loosely installed, and then bring the axle back into it. See how that goes. I've never done these before. I've never dealt with DC bushings, so um, I'm kind of just winging it here. But this is what makes sense to me, so I'll go with it. get those hanging like that and get the other one on. Now we'll get this axle pushed back here. See how it all lines up. I should probably tilt that back up a little bit and make it easier to line up. Find a block. All right, I think I got it lined up to where we can finally get something going here before I start lubing stuff up. Just double check on this side. I think we'll be able to make that work. So. I don't know if you're supposed to grease these bushings up at all. Um, I'm just going to throw a little bit of Silk Glide grease on there and, you know, maybe it'll prevent some squeaking or something. I hate squeaks and rattles and all that, so it's worth a shot. Probably make it, uh, make it come together a lot a little easier when I'm tightening the bolts down too. Seize the bolts. Probably wear more of this stuff than than I get on the bolts. Yeah, 
get all four bolts started on this side and maybe snugged up a little bit. And I'll go to the other side. I got some tension on this one. I'm gonna just switch around, hook up the other one just like this, and then we'll crank them down and start working on the spring spring perches. There's these two 716 threaded holes on the top. Um, on the old, on the other trailing arms that were on here, one of the bolts broke off in there. So it's a good thing I'm using these ones for that as well. I hate getting bolts out if I don't have to. So. These ones are free and clear. We'll get those on and then we'll start working on the springs. I did get the springs in that I ordered, so I've got new springs to put on here. And then uh, once we've got all that, then I'll uh, tighten down the trailing arms in the back here. And then we should be able to put new wheels on. All right, so got this set up. Hopefully I can get it slipped in here. These are the new springs I got. Just parts store, cheap, whatever I could get. It was gonna take me so long to clean up the uh, springs off the donor truck, uh, especially since the one that was on here was broke. I just I think it was 90 bucks for two new springs. And these are what seemed to be a uh, progressive rate. Uh, I got the cup, two, co two, three coils here that are closer together. Uh, that was Supposedly, it's supposed to make it a little bit of softer ride, but then you still get your full weight capacity off the rest of it. So, we'll see how this fits in here, or if I've got to do it some weird way. But. It's not working how I want it to. I was hoping I could just kind of spin them in and not have to fight with bolting them down. Oh, there we go. Now we'll have to set the exact spot so this flat spot's right here for the spring retainer. So, let's see if I can get these bolts tightened a little bit. Let's see if we can get this side in there. Too much tension yet. Yeah. Let's see if I can tap that around. So yeah, so there's this flat spot on the spring here. That needs to uh, sit there so this can go around. But it's got to sit just right. Which, that might be it. I do have new hardware for that deal, so I'm going to use it.
Now I gotta try and get the two uh, spring bucket bolts tight there. Let's see if I can get a ratchet. But this is probably all pretty boring by now, so I'm just gonna get both springs in and then uh, next thing we'll see if we can't uh, fight with the track bar. I was a little leery about whether I should put that on first or do the springs first so we'll see if I have to take it all back apart and start over but all right well I got both springs on and while I was at it I just went and put the track bar on there wasn't really much to see and it's hard to see under the truck but this uh it's kind of what it's looking like. Got to do tie rods yet. Um, I did have to put the old shocks in for now just to keep everything together. Um, they're just loosely in there and before we finish up I'll put new ones on. But uh, it's going to take a little bit to uh, I've got to do the brake lines and get somebody out here to help me bleed the brakes stuff like that. So but I've also got to get cotter pins and all the castle nuts and stuff like that. And so it's going to take, it's going to take me a minute, but it's about 11 o'clock now, PM. So I'm going to probably head out of here for the night, come back tomorrow and uh, try to finish this up, get it back on its wheels. So need my trailer for something in a couple of days. So I got to get this off of here, but, uh, We'll pick this back up tomorrow. Well, back again another day. Um, just have to get the tie rods on this new front axle. Pretty much just did a tape measure alignment compared to the old one. Uh, that'll be good enough for now. Um, Got to get one of those alignment kits or make one out of some angle iron or whatever. Holds tape measure front and back. Um, we'll work something out on that. Straight axle with uh, with the crossover tie rod steering is super easy to align. So I'll probably get it, just get it on, get it straight, get it close enough to where we can deal with it when uh, when I get that steering shaft sorted out, figure out what I'm going to do with that. I don't know if I want to upgrade it or just leave it the factory setup. So we could just set up here. We'll get the... Uh, get the tie rods on, get the drag link on, and then put tires on it and see what it starts, see what it looks like. I'm not sure if the new springs are gonna raise the front end up at all. Um, you know, being that this was a plow truck and had an old style cable western plow on it, I'd imagine that plow never came off the truck uh, for at least the last 20 years. So they might just be weak and it was sitting down on the front, but we'll see. So let me set you up here and we'll start doing it. that's going to do it. Some people might ask why didn't she just rebuild the axle that was in there instead of going through all that trouble. Well the truck that that axle came out of was a 90,000 mile truck. You know I believe that it was original miles. An old farmer had it but it, the, the truck was just too far gone. The roof wasn't even attached anymore. The frame was rotted out. The box was abs it was the worst box I've ever seen. So this this axle it, it had good bearings good gears stuff like that 
uh, at least on the differential part and the pinion. I just went through, I put new axle seals in it, uh, new pinion seal, um, I put wheel bearings in it. I was going to try and reuse the old ones, but they were just too far gone. Um, somebody's obviously somebody was in there, you know, a handful of times and, you know, didn't do a great job. So I just put all new wheel bearings in there, wheel seals. I even got new lockout hubs, but you, you may notice they're not on there. Um, I got some stainless steel mile marker hubs for it. I've used them before. I really like them. But the problem was the stub shafts on these axles, uh, for some reason, the snap ring groove on the very end of them wasn't in the right place for a Dana 44 of this year. So I'm not sure if they're original or if they're out of something else. Um, but I've still got them. When I have to take it apart again, the stub shafts that are in the other axle are the correct ones, so I'll probably switch them out then. But until then, I don't know what other kind of lockouts I can put on here. So I just cleaned them up. They still work. They're just, you know, faded and ugly. Um, so it really is hurt to put those on uh, such a clean axle now. But, you know, if you take a look under here, I mean, it's, it's just nice to see it all cleaned up. You know, the axle's a little dirty from all the grinding, you know, wire wheel and all the rusty parts. But, you know, it looks good. I just got to get it greased up. Um, the rusty mounts for the um, steering stabilizer, if I can think, you know, I'll take those off and, you know, wire wheel and clean those up. Um, you know, when I get the steering stabilizer, I just wanted to put them on so I didn't lose them. You know, if they're on there, I know where they are. You know, and if you go back here, you know, it's nice to have the trailing arms all cleaned up. All this bracketry here and the frame, uh, that'll get cleaned up eventually. You know, I'll get the whole frame painted. In the future, I'm going to be taking the box off here. Um, I've got to put a new... I know I put a new fuel pump in it. Um, I don't remember if I showed that, but it does have a new tank and an in-tank fuel pump. Um, on these trucks, the back of the frame is the same all the way up to like 95 or 96 F-150s. So the rear tank is out of a 95 F-150. Um, so I'm running a factory Ford pump in there out of a 95, but I tried to modify the fuel sending unit to uh, work with the 77 gauges and it didn't work out so and of course I modified it so I can't just put it back so I've got a new fuel pump got to get that going um, got to get the rest of the trailer wiring in uh, for the brake controller that I already integrated into the dash harness so uh, there's some things coming up um, this truck is going to be it's going to be around I'm not getting rid of it you know eventually it's going to have a whole new body on it I've already got a cab for it um, that we'll get to put in. I think the floor, one of the floors need to be done and then the front cab mounts need to be done for sure because somebody cut them off. Instead of cutting the bolt, they cut the cab mounts. I don't understand it. So this is going to be around. I want this to be restored in the long run. Well, restored, but I want it to look good, you know, not... I don't know if you can be able to see it, but how wavy that bedside is. You know, I want it better than that. All the fish eyes and the paint. You know, that, that all those fish eyes, that's the entire truck. Whoever painted this didn't do any prep work and the entire paint job, you know, fish eyed. The whole thing. The whole hood is fish eyed. Everything. The roof. The whole works. So... It'll get there eventually. Um, I, I've always kind of been a truck guy, you know. I like classic cars, but I've always just liked trucks more. So if you like this kind of content or you really want to see that 55 Chevy that uh, was in the last video, go ahead and subscribe, follow along as uh, we continue to work on these old trucks. Um, not saying we won't get cars, but just going to keep getting one by one and we'll start restoring them. Thanks for watching.